Welcome back to the second part of the Flutter YouTube search tutorial course. In the last part we've set up the YouTube API and created the search model classes using the built value package. In this part we are going to focus on getting the JSON data from the API, handling errors and we are also going to do a bit of testing. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. and as I've already said, this whole second part will be focused on getting the data from the API and converting it over into our model classes and all of that functionality will be inside a class called YouTube Data Source. As you may remember from the last part, I said that this app is fully tested because as I was preparing this app for this tutorial series, I was doing the so-called test-driven development. However, I am now going to do test-driven development on video. Even though I'm not going to do it, you can still see the tests which I made as I was preparing for this tutorial series. So, for example, here we have one precisely for YouTube data source which we are going to build in this tutorial. There are a bunch of errors because yeah the YouTube data source class is not even yet present here. Now I'm just going to quickly walk you through this YouTube data source test. We're gonna implement the functionality that this test describes in this part. YouTube data source will get its data from an HTTP client. However, in testing we don't use the real HTTP client to make calls on the network. We just want to simulate network calls and that's why we are mocking the client, creating a mock object using the Mokito library here. And then we are creating a mock client here and we are passing it over to YouTube data source in the setup function. So now whenever we call something on the YouTube data source, it's going to operate only with the mock client and not do real calls over the network. The mock client has to return some JSON data because as you can probably remember, this is the data which is returned from the API. So we need to return somehow this kind of a JSON data even from the mock client. This can be done really simply by creating the so-called fixtures of data. These fixtures are present under test data fixtures and then for example search result.json. This is just copied JSON from the web browser. So nothing fancy about that. We have a search result, classic search result, then one which doesn't have any next page token because it's the last page, right? Here the next page token is present, but in the other one there is no next page token. Then we have an empty search result, for example, when the query string does not match any anything. And then we also have an error. For example, if we pass in an invalid channel ID, it returns a code 400 error with the message invalid channel. So these are all the fixtures that we have here. And also, obviously, you can get the code from the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. So we can go over this full testing file at your own pace and you can really study it because I'm not going to explain it fully in this part. But testing is pretty self-explanatory actually because tests act as a living documentation of your code. Now I'm just gonna go over one single test and the rest will be left for you as a homework to understand. For example, we have one test which tests that uh, search videos, which will be a function on the YouTube data source. So whenever we call search videos, it returns YouTube search result when the call completes successfully. So here we want to only mock the client. So when uh, there is a method called on the mock client called get with an argument that starts with this URL starting point which is the URL that we are going to be calling. Then we asynchronously want to answer a response. So we will asynchronously return an HTTP response containing the fixture search result, which is uh, this one. And we set the code to be 200, which means OK. And the headers are content type application JSON with the char set of UTF-8 or car set, I think it should be pronounced. Anyway, then we actually call datasource.searchvideos, which returns a YouTube search result. 
and we expect that when we call data source search videos that that search videos in the data source class will in turn call the mock client this is something that we actually need to implement this is the stuff that we are actually testing here and we search videos for query reso coder and the page token is just some made up uh, gibberish so a b c d and then the returned result should be of type youtube search result it should have length of items two because our search result the marked one has only two items so the first one and the second one is here and finally we just check for the first items title it should start with android kotlin forecast app 01 and surely it uh, does so here so that's why we are checking for it then there are a bunch of more tests for example throws an error on bad request then makes an http request to a proper url and uh, that's about it but you can see that this testing code is quite long and that's why i'm not gonna write it on video so really go over this code as your homework to understand test driven development all right now that we have this testing code somewhat covered we can move on to actually write the production code to implement these tests so that they will pass so we can close uh, the search result json and also the serializers here and we are going to create a new folder under data it will be called network now here we want to create youtube data source dot dart it's gonna be a simple class and we want to import first http so uh, http.dart as http this way we can create a final http client field so http.client called client and this final property will be passed into the constructor so we want to create a constructor of youtube data source and over there just set up this dot client so whatever is passed into this constructor will be set up as the client all right now let's create a function for searching videos it needs to return a future because it's gonna be asynchronous and this future will contain youtube search result which is our build value class and the name of this function is search videos it will take two parameters and they are going to be named so curly braces inside these parentheses and their names will be query and then another one will be string page token as i've said previously there can be instances where we do not need to pass in the page token for example when we are fetching only the first page so that's why this page token will be set to an empty string by default now the function body of the search videos function will be asynchronous so let's create that let's also import youtube search result from model search dot dart and now what do we need to do here we basically want to do the same thing as when we call the url inside the browser so we want to somehow call a similar url as this one so we can copy it then go back to visual studio code and create a final property up top it will be called search base url it will be also private and we are just going to paste the url which we have just copied here and now we need to modify it a bit for example the query will be passed directly from that function so it will be concatenated on top of this string so we want to delete it from uh, here from the base string or from the base url also let's make max search results to be somehow settable so we are going to delete this hard-coded value of max results and we are rather going to create a constant all the way even above the class itself it will be called const int max search results and it will be equal to 5 but you can set it really to whatever you want somewhere around 20 is pretty good and now we can pass this constant as interpolated here so max search results let's also actually put this to another line so that uh, we can see it properly here and let's concatenate it yeah now it fits the screen nicely and while we could leave it like this it's not a good practice to put your api key into the source control so we are just going to delete it from here 
we could also copy it right now but uh, we're going to copy it from the API key source so to say so if you don't have the API key currently you can always go back to your Google Developers Console go to your project credentials right so uh, API services dashboard credentials and just copy it from there now we have it copied and we are going to create a separate file called API key.dart under the network this will only hold cons string API key which will be equal to the copied value now we can see that it was added to the source control to the git we don't want that however so we are going to go over to the git tab to the source control tab and if you are using something else than Visual Studio Code, the process should be pretty similar. And we want to right click on this API key.dart here and we want to add it to git ignore. So somewhere down here, yeah, you can see that we are ignoring lip data network API key.dart. You can obviously also add this manually here. You don't need to go through the source control tab. And now when we save this git ignore file, you can see that the API key file is not present anymore in the source control. All right, so with this API key all set, we can now put it as the key for our search base URL. So again, interpolate API key and let's import this from API key.dart. Now let's get back to search videos. As a query, we can pass in whatever string we please. So for example, reso coder but also reso space coder and that's a bit of a problem because URLs cannot contain spaces right because of that we need to encode this URL first up we are going to concatenate the raw URL so non-encoded with the spaces final URL raw it's gonna be equal to the search base URL plus so concatenate ampersand Q will be equal to the query string which is the parameter of this function and then again concatenate another thing here we are going to use the ternary operator which will check if page token is not empty then we want to concatenate ampersand page token is equal to interpolated page token otherwise so if page token is in fact empty we just want to concatenate nothing so completely empty string here now we can save and the dart formatter will nicely format the code for us out of this raw url we want to create an encoded url it's really simple just call uri so yuri dot encode full and the yuri to encode is url raw now comes the time to call the http client we want to call client dot get and we want to get something from the URL encoded and that something needs to be awaited since we are in an async body function we can await freely and then whatever is returned from this client.get we want to put it over to final response variable and what's cool about this is that because we are passing the client over in the constructor here whenever this will be called from the tests it will actually call the mocked client and when this is called from the production app it will call the actual http real client which makes network calls so that's why dependency injection through the constructor is really crucial when you are doing test driven development this way you can just pass in mocks in tests and pass in real objects in production code and finally once we have the response already we want to check if response.status code is equal to 200 which is the status OK and if it is we simply want to return YouTube search result and now we are going to use the from JSON function which will utilize the serializer of built value from JSON and the JSON from which we want to get the YouTube search result is simply contained in response which was returned dot body and otherwise so if response status code is not 200 which means that in our case it's basically 400 which means error we want to throw YouTube search error then later on we are going to catch this error in other classes and we are going to show a nice message to the user to let him know what happened and as you may remember from the last part YouTube search error is not a built value class so we just cannot call from data it's only a simple class implementing exception we can check it out over here 
So we actually need to pass the message to its constructor. We can do that by simply calling the constructor, obviously, and then we only want to get the message from the error. The error looks like this. It has an object error, which contains a code and also a message. So over to the constructor of YouTube search error, we want to pass the decoded error message. This can be done by calling json.decode. For that, we need to import dart convert. So uh, control that and import library dart convert. We want to decode response body, but we do not want to pass the whole body inside the YouTube search error. We only want to pass in the message. And that message is contained in the error object. So we are accessing a map value error. And that error is another object within the map. So we want to access the message from there. So error and then another accessor message. Awesome. So we can now save this YouTube data source. And let's go over to the test and let's import all of the classes which we have created. So probably only this YouTube data source. We have still some other errors. Yeah, YouTube search result. This should also be imported here. So let's import model search dot dart. And we have still yet one error, which is that we need to import the API key here. Now we do not have any errors in the test and we can launch the test. This can be done by going over to the debug tab. We want to add a new configuration over here. So add configuration. Currently, we have only one configuration for launching the actual Flutter app inside the emulator or inside your device. But we want to add new configuration and that is Flutter run all tests. And now we can select this configuration from here when we save the launch.json. So Flutter run all tests and we can uh, launch all of these tests. So we start debugging. But we have an error, which is that YouTube search error was thrown. Why is that? Let's check it out. All right. So we can see that this test expects that calling search videos whenever the mock client returns an error should in fact throw YouTube search error which is exactly what happens. So I actually do not know why it decided to, to stop the app from running, to stop the tests from running. So let's just stop the tests and let's rerun them with my really neat keyboard shortcut. And you can do the same again from the debug tab, just launch all the tests or search for the shortcut on Google. And now suddenly all of the tests are passing. So this was just some kind of a weird error. Again, you can check out this code from the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. And as you are going over these tests here, just imagine that you always write the test first and then you implement its functionality in production code. So for example, this throws an error on bad request is only after the YouTube call when it, uh, complete successfully. So first you would only implement the successful thing. So no error here handling, no error handling. And then you would write the another code, the another test for when an error occurs, it would first fail because you don't have that functionality yet implemented. And after it fails, you would go over to your production YouTube data source and you would add this else statement here. And now that test would pass. So you always implement only the least possible functionality that you can in order for the test to pass. All right, and that's it for this tutorial. If it helped you understand a bit the test driven development, if you learned how to pass around mock objects, how to make HTTP calls in Flutter, definitely give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss more tutorials like this and also many of the next parts of this particular tutorial series in which we are creating a YouTube search app. Consider also hitting the bell button so that you can join the notification squad and be notified about every new video that I upload. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.